Come on in and take a seat and we'll get started. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home of God's lives and shores. I'll fly away. see everybody here today. Do we have any first time visitors with us this morning? Y'all been out nearly about long enough, Miss Debbie. It's good to see y'all back. Papa Bill, we're going to get him up in a minute to sing a special for you. Any first time visitors? All right, here's one on the front row. Go cool deal. We're glad you're here this morning. All right, as you know, here at Cowboy Church, we do things just a little bit different. We don't pass the hat. We've got a couple of churches in the back. That's your opportunity to take care of that. We feel like giving is between you and the Holy Spirit, and we don't want to get involved in that. So if, you, uh, if, if the Spirit is leading you to give, you can take care of your business back there. There's communication cards in the seats in front of you. Uh, if you have a need for the church prayer request, anything like that, you can fill one of those cards out, drop it in the churches as well. And uh, someone from the church will be getting in touch with you about that need. Pastor Chet's going to have several more uh, announcements for you shortly, uh, including we, there's some stuff been added to the list going to Louisiana next week. So uh, he, he'll let you know about that in a little bit. Let's get started with a word of prayer. God, I love you. I thank you for this day and all your blessings. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here today. God, I just pray right now that your spirit would be in this place. God, I pray that everything that we do would honor and glorify you. And Father, be with Pastor Chet as he brings the message. God, give him the words to say this morning that we need to hear. And God, if there's one here that don't know you, I pray that today would be the day that that relationship status would change. Father, I ask that you would go on through life with us, forgive us for sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friend, don't worry about this heavy load I carry. Don't be concerned. If it sends me to my knees For I know a place 
peace Where all my load will lighten And I'll be alright As soon as I touch Calvary If my feeble hands of faith could only reach out through this dark and dreary storm of unbelief. If he'll slip his nail scarred hand in my hand, I'll be all right as soon as I touch Calvary. Very soon now, I'll reach the hill, Golgotha. And I'll touch the cross that was fashioned from a tree. And if one precious drop of his blood touches me, I'll be all right because now I've reached Calvary and if my feeble hands of faith could only reach out through this dark and dreary storm of slip his nail scarred hand in my hand I'll be alright as soon as I've touched Calvary yeah I'll be alright because now I've reached Calvary
Just call me heaven bound All the way to glory now When my life runs out of track Can't you see? Can't you see? What my Jesus been doing for me Can't you see? Oh, can't you see? What the good Lord's been doing for me Can't you see, can't you see What my Jesus been doing for me Can't you see, oh can't you see What the good Lord's been doing for me Can't you see, can't you see What the good Lord's been doing for me Can't you see can't you see what good Lord's been doing for me? Can't you see, oh, can't you see what my Jesus been doing for me? We struggled through that one, didn't we? <laughs> hey, it's live. You never know what you're going to get. And walk through this world me and go where I go and share all my dreams with me I need you so in life we've searched and some of his fine and I've looked for you a long long time and now that I've found you new horizons I see this world with me and walk through this world with me and go where I go and share all my dreams with me I need you so Some of us find And I've looked for you At this time, I'm going to ask the uh, 
elders and lay pastors to come up. Todd, you didn't know about this, but it won't hurt, I promise. <laughs> What we're going to do while we uh, while the band does this last song for you, if anybody's got a prayer need, uh, you want to pray with one of these guys, just let the Spirit lead you and come on up. I thought that number one would surely be me I thought I could be what I wanted to be I thought I could build on life sinking sand but I can't If you know it, sing with me. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high. The valley's too wide. Down on my knees where I learned to stand. Lord, I can't Without you holding my hand I think I'll make Jesus my one and my all From now on when I'm in trouble Only his name I'll call and if I can't trust him, I'd be less of a man. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain too high Lord that valley's too wide down on my knees where I learned to stand Lord I can't even walk without you holding my hand Lord I can't Without you holding my hand The mountain's too high The valley's too wide Down on my knees Where I learned to stand Lord, I can't even walk Without you holding my hand Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high, the valley's too wide. Down on my knees where I learned to stand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high, sing it. The valley's too wide. Stand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. 
Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain, Lord, that valley is too wide. Down on my knees, where I Stand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Yeah, Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Would you stand and join us for the pledge, please? Ready, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you welcome Pastor Chet? Blessed today. All right. Hey, there we go. We got some heat now. That's what I like to hear. Amen. Hey, I want to run over a, a few quick announcements. Uh, this morning, first of all, I had mentioned Wednesday and um, for a few services, I had reached out to the elders and said, hey, there's a little book that I used to give out many, for many years when I pastored in Nacogdoches called God's Promises for Your Every Need. How many of you thankful God's got promises for whatever our need is? But this is the problem. Sometimes we don't know what that promise exactly is and where it's at. And these books are very easy. We've given away thousands of them over the last 20 years. So I ordered a few. And I was thinking, how could I give these out? And during that, I came out of my office and went to Sunday school this morning. And I saw Mike and I said, look, this is one way we used to do it. And I, I, we were doing some prayer at the end of the service. So I said, at the last worship song, let's try it to where we open it up for prayer and on Sundays on Wednesdays we open up for prayer but I like the fact that even on a Sunday when the crowd's bigger and we you know press for time that we can still have the altar open for prayer so I don't know about y'all but I enjoyed that this morning amen because <laughs> we all have needs so uh, I'm thankful that the guys just stepped up so guess what we're going to just keep doing that all right and you know there's going to be Sundays that nobody has a need that's a praise report too right but we all have needs and we need one another the Bible says that iron sharpens iron and it says that we need each other and it does something to you to uh, you know even if you're in your seat and you see somebody that's in need right away you, you, you say Lord I don't know what they need but I ask you to work in their life and I don't know about you but there's power in praying for one another so we're going to start giving these books out when you come forward for prayer even if you don't come forward for prayer and you need one of these books we're going to get them in your hands we got uh, some ordered they're, they're going to be here on the stage let us know after church if you need one and we'll sure get it in, into your hands but I'm thankful for our elders and everybody lay pastors stepping up and praying for, for one another that's, a, that's an awesome time here's an, another prayer request Corey and Susie Stevens having a new baby today in Beaumont at the hospital. So let's pray for, for this family and for every person here today. I just want to open up with prayer. Lord, we just lift up every need, Lord, within our church. We thank you that you're more than enough, that you care for us. and you, Lord, we can come to you, Lord, literally with our hat in our hand and say, Lord, you know, we need you, every one of us. We pray that you'd meet every need within our church for this family with the new baby. We just thank you for watching over us, protecting us. We thank you for a healthy child and and lord may you meet every need here today in jesus name everybody said Amen. 
I don't know about you, but I get excited about the fact that God cares about us. Amen. He cares about our troubles. He, he, he wants to, he likes it when we're happy, but he also is there for us when we're sad. Whatever we may be going through, God's always there. If you have your bulletin today, flip it open. We're going to go down it together. This is a good way for you to keep up what's going on in the church. Um, quilt raffle uh, donated by Joan Dial and uh, Molly, her dog. All proceeds go to Handicapable Rodeo. Tickets are $1 or 6 for $5. Is this today the last day? That's what I hear for, for this raffle. So uh, make sure and get your tickets. Who do they need to see? Miss Ann? <laughs> Okay, if you got some tickets. Okay, we got some people wanting to buy those tickets, so let's make sure we get those available uh, today. And uh, let's see, we go down the list. Uh, we need volunteers for the nursery. Um, you must have a background check and prior to do that. So what what's happening is we're, we're building our church back, and we went through a challenging time. And, you know, I've been pastor 25 years off and on, and I've never seen anything like we've been through. Well, we're not through it, but we, we are marching forward. Can I get a good amen? Yeah. And uh, I believe that God is, is working and our church is building back up. And uh, so we're going to start the nursery soon. And also anybody that would be interested in helping with Children's Church. We did have uh, a young lady volunteer the other day. So and Miss, isn't it a blessing to see Miss Debbie and Mr. Veal back? They've been on our prayer list. But, uh, man, it, it's a joy. Uh, but Miss Debbie and Miss Charlotte and Ed couldn't be here today. Miss Charlotte's mom passed away. We called and talked to them last night. But they'll be back next week. And Charlotte and Debbie and Miss Donna did uh, a lot of the children's ministry. So we're looking at launching the children's ministry back. The Buckaroos here around uh, October and uh, trying to get back going. So we, we th this is what you need to know. I, I've preached in all size churches. The first time I I ever went on the street team, I had to speak to 1,200 people that night. I was nervous, but they didn't know it. Amen. <laughs> Now it ain't no big deal. I've preached to eight people at Beulah, the mega church in Beulah, Texas. I've preached to eight people. So it doesn't matter to me. I've preached with nurseries. I've preached with children's church. I've preached without. So if you have a child in service and they get a little a little uncomfortable and they make some noise, it doesn't bother me. I can carry right on. Just You can go out in the foyer. There's a screen and the sounds. Uh, you can hear the sound. Everything's there. So the kids don't bother me, but we are working as we continue to rebuild and get back back to normal uh, we're going to get our children's church going soon we're, we're working on that but in the meantime don't worry bring the kids on can I get a good amen yeah. all right <laughs> years ago my mom and dad used to tell stories about church and they didn't know what uh, children's church was my sister tells the story she's 80 years old and one time in Beulah church it has a, a slanted um, floor it was like a theater built in 1927 that was a state of the art mega church in Beulah in 1927 she said she made a mistake one Sunday on the back row playing with her friends and she accidentally dropped a marble on the hardwood floor and said Ding! and rolled all the way under everybody's feet and hit the altar and went ding, ding, ding. <laughs> She said it was not good when church let out. She was hoping the church lasted as long as it possibly could. She wanted to hear the longest sermon of her life because she got hands laid on her after church, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Amen. But we, we love church. We love kids. We're just doing what we got to do. We're working on children's church, though. Um, we are taking donations for our friends at Open Gate Cowboy Church in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Mike mentioned that earlier. There's a list in your bulletin. Uh, wet wipes, off bug spray, repellent, sunscreen, personal hygiene items. They were they were hit obviously hard in Lake Charles. Non-perishable foods of any kind. Monetary donations for things we don't receive. Another thing that I have added on this list is flashlights and batteries. We will deliver these things next Friday, 9 a.m. 18. You can drop your donations off at the church office during business hours or during service times. You got Mike's number and Miss Angela McDonald of the missions team if you would like to help in that or you can get with somebody here at church today. We'll run down some quick announcements. Don't forget your communication cards. Fill that out if you have a prayer request on a Sunday. Now that we've got the altar open, that's even better where we can meet your needs. We're thankful God answers prayer. We don't pass the hat at Cowboy Church, but when God puts it on your heart to put to honor him with your first fruits of your increase, your giving, your offering, tithes, whatever, there's a wooden church in the back of each side of the auditorium 
and one in the foyer as well. Don't forget to stop by the sale barn, see the neat stuff they have in there. Wednesday meals, we're eating at 6.15 uh, on Wednesday nights. And men's prayer breakfast, is that in the morning, guys? Man, we got some we got some, some happy guys. I heard them in there talking. They're getting ready for the big potluck today. And Kurt asked DJ, are we going to eat in the morning? He said, does a bear live in the woods? <laughs> now, he really didn't. He just said, yeah. But I thought, man, these guys are getting a double portion. They're going to eat today, and then they're all getting ready for breakfast in the morning at 6 o'clock. The youth meet on Wednesday night, 6.30 to 7. Don't forget, if you got a teenager, get them involved. Start a watch party in our services. The new camera is up and running. Mr. Cody's back there getting with it. Got some headphones on. Y'all give him a hand clap. <laughs> That camera came in the other day and it was sitting on my desk and I touched it real easy and said, here, take this thing. I don't even know how to turn it on, but here it is, my brother, make it work. Do your magic. So he, he's working on that. We're thankful for trying to get our sound like it needs to be. And we have a men's Bible study on Sundays at 9 a.m. and a women's Bible study. Miss Allison uh, and Miss Sheila kicked that off today. It went good. Children's church workers, we're going to try to fire off around the 1st of October. We'll let you know on that. Helpers in the nursery, sign up on the communication card or give us a call. Potluck today. Can I get a good amen? Where's our workers, Miss Laura? Are they in the back still? Oh, they didn't spread out, but we appreciate the, the ladies in the kitchen and, and men that are volunteering. Let's give them a hand clap. All right, we are, we're back in the swing. You know, October 31st, we're going to have another outreach in the arena, uh, a roping school, team roping school. We talked to Brett Gould. I actually shoe his horses. He's been in the NFR about three times. Not only is he a great roper, but he's a great teacher. So our next school will be October 31st. We're going to take five headers and five healers. In order to do that, just give me a call, holler at me, and I'll start a list, and then we'll go to an alternate list. But I just want to challenge everybody. Let's, let's give our uh, viewers that are watching live a good hand clap this morning. Amen. Man, it's good to see we have a, a very strong crowd this morning. We're excited. I just want to challenge you, though, if you're within driving distance of the church, I would encourage you to be here if you can. We understand if for health conditions or concerns, we understand that. Uh, if you want to stay home and watch live, but if you're where you can, you need to be here. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.25 that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. So I have reached out to some 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 people and, and said, man, we miss you. And they'll say, well, Pastor, I, be honest with you. I just got a little lazy. It's so easy to watch it on there and not be there. But there is something about assembling together. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, for we encourage one another. And, you know, it's, it's good to watch online. That's all you can, especially if you live a long way off and you love our church and call this your, your, your church. Man, we love you. But if you can get here. We want you to be here. Amen. We want you in person. We want to look at you. We want to look at the whites of your eyes. We want to see your teeth. Amen. And you know, we got a good looking crowd this morning. Y'all are getting sharp. Now I just called you good looking. But hey, if you can get here, don't don't fall for that trap. You know, this don't there's something about being together. Church is like getting on a spiritual battery charger. Amen. And it's one thing if it, to, but if you can at all be here, man, let, let's go. I'm I'm excited excited about church. Praise the Lord. I'm glad we can come together and build each other up. And I just don't want to be governed and let my life be governed by any fear. I want to be wise, but I encourage you, if you can be here, be here. Can I get a good amen? All right, here we go. If you have your Bible, let's open our Bibles to Philippians chapter... Four, and we'll go there in just a little bit. I'm going to get Miss Cheryl to pull up a video first. And when she gets that ready, she can let me. Oh, that's, that's pretty fast. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody say keep trying. I want you to watch this little fella right here get on this horse. I mean, this is a pretty good sermon. He got him a rope tied in the stirrup there so he can get his foot to it. <laughs> <laughs> what 
Yeah, I wonder what that horse is worth. <laughs> I just had to give a black check for him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> He, he gonna look back, watch him, see if his daddy's proud of him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the audio on that, when he looks back and gets up there squared up, his daddy says, that's a way to make a hand. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and you know, in life, we as, as a Christian and, and anybody in the cowboy world, when somebody says that guy's a hand, you know what they're saying? He, he knows what he's doing. Amen. He ain't got no quit in him. Can I get a good amen? Yeah. And, and I know it's something about cowboys. You don't have to be one, but I, I'm thankful that cowboys are pretty tough. And, and we don't, we like to say we don't have a lot of quit in us. Amen. <laughs> and uh, that little boy there, that's a prime example. How many of you feel like that in life? I mean, you had to put a little rope around your stirrup. You can't even get up there. Boy, he was pulling and yanking. And he was grabbing everything he could get his hands on. A little lad to go here, a candle on the saddle. But he made his way up. And, and then in life, that's going to happen to all of us. We're going to be scratching and pulling. Everybody say scratching and pulling. You know, that may not be perfect terminology, praise the Lord. Aren't y'all glad I don't have perfect grammar? <laughs> I mean, I thank God for it. It just, God didn't bless me with that gift. Amen. I'm straight out of Beulah. I even got a t-shirt that says it to prove it. Amen. But I am thankful that we, we in life, you're going to have to scratch and you're going to have to pull. And you're going to have to tie a little rope on your stirrup sometimes. You're going to go through hard times. But the key is that we always keep scratching and keep pulling. And we keep fighting life through. Because the only way you can keep doing that is know that we've read the back of the book and we know who wins. Amen. So when you and Jesus are together, you are a majority. You're on the winning team. Can I get a good amen? I mean, the Lord walks with us. He talks with us. He, he keeps us even when we didn't deserve him to keep his hand on us. He done it many, many, many times that we know of. That's not even mentioned in the times that our dumb selves didn't even know that God had his hand on us. Can I get a good amen? I used to get so aggravated, boy, sometimes just the other day I missed a turn and I don't miss many turns. I'm a horseshoer, so I learned to take directions and a guy called me a while back. I was going to borrow this horse from a guy and I'll tell you a funny story. I, wanted, I was looking for me a horse to learn how to heal on again and try to get back into roping a little bit just for fun with my kids and grandkids and friends. And uh, so I, a buddy of mine says, there's a horse for sale over in Holly, Texas. Anybody know where Holly is? That's over around Groveton. And man, it, it, it's a little bitty. It, it's about like Beulah. Amen. And so I call this guy, a, a friend of mine who is a farrier. Uh, it's a customer of his. And he says, there's a guy over here that's got a horse. I don't know nothing about him, but so I called this guy and he, I said, he didn't know who I was. I said, well, you know what I mean? I'd like to look at him. He said, I'm going to tell you what, you come try this horse. He said, you, you'll buy him. The horse sells itself. You come try him. He's going to come around there. He does the same thing every time. So I said, okay. So we talked. He said, I told him my name was Chet. And that's all he asked. And we, we got talking about the horse. I said, well, tell me where it's at. He said, I don't know if you can find it. I said, give me directions. I said, I'm going to go get the horse. I got an hour and 20 minute gap. I'm going to go to Holly, Texas, get him, and then head back to Nacogdoches to do something that I had to do. So I take off, go pick up the horse. Then I get to thinking, this guy don't know me. And he texts me. He was real nice. And he said, Mr. Chet, I forgot to ask you, what's your last name? <laughs> So he's probably told somebody and let somebody borrow his horse. And then he said, well, who was it? And he said, well, now that you think about it, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm sure he said, man, you better get a hold of that, brother. He may, stay, he may take your horse. Now, Austin, he said... He reached out to my buddy and Austin almost told him, said, you'll never see that horse again. <laughs> Just as a joke, but he said, I ain't going to do that to him. <laughs> anyway, but you know, we, we miss turns. Other day I was going and I, anyway, I found that place where that guy was. He thought it was going to be hard, but I actually did find it, believe it or not. Sometimes I don't. But the other day, when I say God has his hand on you, even when you're not even, we, sometimes we don't even realize it. I used to get mad when I'd miss a turn. When I was young, anybody ever 
a little a little harder hitting when you're younger. As you get older, you kind of realize, man, Lord, Lord's had his hand on me longer than I realized. But I missed a turn the other day, and I hardly ever miss a turn. But the first thing I thought of is, for all I know, God could have saved me from something that I have no idea that was going to happen. Amen. And so many times, God has had his hand on us. We didn't know it, but God's had his hand on us many times when we do know it. Amen. His hand of protection, and that he watches over us, and he takes us through things. So I want to challenge you today. You gotta, sometimes you got to scratch and pull like a little boy. Amen. But I, I want to give you a key to you walking in victory or peace peace in your life and letting open in the door for God to do a lot of things in your life. And that key is thanksgiving or gratitude. Everybody say, I love my pastor. I got you on tape and, and, and you said it. But thanksgiving is a powerful tool. And I want to read a definition here of what... Thanksgiving is in the power of Thanksgiving. Whenever Thanksgiving rises up to God, He is stirred into action to perform a miracle. Can I get a good amen? amen. Be a thanksgiver because Thanksgiving releases enormous power of God to do wonders in your life. Gratitude is a special force that empowers you to scale to higher heights with God. So gratitude is a powerful tool in, in the ingredients. Now, how many of you know there's a lot of good food cooked out there today? But it takes different ingredients. My mama was old school. She was born in 1924. And when she would make stuff, we would, I remember my sister-in-law and different ones, they were older than I was, but as a little boy, they'd say, Momo, can you give us a recipe? And she said, well, I just put a pinch of this, a pinch of that, and about a spoonful of that. Yeah, anybody been around that kind of cooking? And it's perfect. But now somebody else can try it, and it may not be so good. But just like when we cook a cake or food back there, it's important that we have all the what? Ingredients. And in order for me to be successful and me and you, I might have to have Thanksgiving as an important part of my life. Now, Thanksgiving doesn't always come naturally. For some people, it comes easier than others. Philippians chapter 4, I'm going to read a verse to you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 7. It says, don't worry, verse 6 says, don't worry about anything. How many of us got that conquered perfectly? <laughs> we never worry, right? That's something we're all... We could preach on worry every Sunday and never wear it out. <laughs> because it's something that we all deal with. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about how many things? Everything. Everything. Tell God what you need. And how many of us don't have any problem doing that? Lord, this is what I need. And that's good. God wants us to come to Him with our needs. He says, tell God what you need and then what do you do thank him for what all he has done do you know the list would be longer than your leg if you really begin to write down the things that God has done for you maybe we don't realize it maybe we're in a challenging time in our life and we, we we're, we're struggling to be thankful but I'm telling you Thanksgiving is that ingredient that makes the cake taste good amen it, it's what we need Thanksgiving is a essential in our life and in our relationship with God. He says, don't worry about anything. It goes on and says, tell God what you need and thank Him for what? All He has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will do what? Guard your hearts and our mind as you live in Christ Jesus. So the key to this is what? Thanksgiving. It's learning to be thankful to the Lord. And you might say, well, why would you preach on this? You know, you mentioned being thankful uh, Wednesday night. And if you were here Wednesday night or you watched online, I did. I didn't preach on being thankful, but I mentioned being thankful for my tractor. Can I get a good amen? And you say, well, why would an old 51-year-old fella be thankful for a tractor? He's probably had a tractor a long time. Well, I have had some tractors in my lifetime, like most of you guys. How many men love to get on a tractor and get a little therapy sometimes? Be a, raise your hand if you like your tractor sometimes. And you know, in 2011, 
up until then, from 1993 to about December of 2010, everything in my life kind of was, was, it was easy, it was good. And I'm thankful for that. How many of you are thankful for the good times? Praise the Lord. How many of you had a few good times? How many of you had one where you're scratching and pulling like a little boy to get on the saddle? And we don't like those times, but once you get through them, you can literally thank God for them. Can I get a good amen? So I remember at that time, went through a terrible, difficult time, lost everything I had. Had to take my tractor. I had worked and thought so hard. Raspberry wine. I, I was blessed. I mean, God blessed me. I bought a bull named Raspberry Wine. He had retired, been to the PBR finals in 1998. So I, I buy this bull named Raspberry Wine. He was an, an okay bull. He bucked, went, he bucked good enough to go to the PBR finals back then. Someone owned this bull up around Texarkana, Texas, and I thought, man, I like him. So I approached him about buying raspberry wine. So I purchased, they said, well, we'll sell him to you. I said, well, I'm going to take him. So I buy this bull, bring him home to Nacogdoches, Texas, and about 30 days later, they sell a yearling calf, bull calf, out of him. They bucked him on a video, and he was ranked. Everybody say amen for Pastor Chick. <laughs> Guess who owns the daddy? And so this bull sells on the internet on an online auction for $52,250. Now that's a lot of money in that day. And here I am with raspberry wine at the house. I'm thinking, Lord. So God blessed me to do so many little things that you just look back and say, and it, there's things that didn't work out. But I like to talk about the things that did. Amen. <laughs> to encourage you. But I'll talk about the things that didn't as well. So a straw of semen on raspberry wine was $200. And after that auction that night, it went to 1000 Can I get a good amen? <laughs> And I'm so thankful for that time. Now that did run its course. And just like in the horse world, everybody wants to breed to a different one after these few years. Whatever is a hot thing. But God blessed me during that time. And during the time, Raspberry, you know, helped me get a tractor. I mean, I had a tractor, but he helped me get a little better tractor, if you know what I mean. I still got a picture at the house of me feeding old Raspberry wine. And I'm forever humble that God allowed me to own that little bull. Because he helped me and helped my family, helped my kids financially. They was all at home then and young and we could go do things and we, we, we were blessed. And, but God is not limited to one way in your life to meet your needs. There's a pretty good sermon in that alone. Who would have thought that? And so... Old raspberry, that semen went up, and so I'd sell a little semen, and I ended up getting me a tractor, and then all of a sudden my life changed in a very difficult way, and I had to take my cab tractor and wash it and take it back to the bank, and it was a very discouraging, disappointing time, embarrassing, I guess would be the best word, but I went seven years without a tractor, and I found me an old 8 in Ford. How many of you remember that 8 in Ford? And I'm, I just mentioned this Wednesday night. Why are why are you so thankful for a tractor? There's always a story. I let my tractor go, and I knew God was God, and he could restore. How many of you think are thankful that God can restore? But the process of restoration isn't always fun. Amen. And long story short, just a few years ago, I was able to get me another tractor. Can I get a good amen? And to you, it might mean nothing, but I, I, yesterday I went out to the deer lease and I was able to mow on a, on a tractor that ran. How many of you ever had a tractor break on you? It can be challenging. I had some hoopty cars, but I've had a few hoopty tractors too. <laughs> But I'm so thankful for that tractor. And I don't know that if I would be if I hadn't went through some hard times. Remember the kid? He's scratching. He's got his, his boot heel stuck in a piece of rope around a, a stirrup. And there's times in life you're going you're gonna to scratch and claw. But he says here in, in, in Philippians that we're not to worry about anything, but pray about it. Tell God what you need with what? Thanksgiving. So let's learn to be thankful for what we have, whether it's big or small. Allison actually taught a class on gratitude. Uh, what was some of the lists? You got that mic? Can you turn that thing on? Uh oh, she's wanting. They had a list. I was watching in, in the in the class. They had a list that was what you can do for bring it up here. I can turn it on for you if you ain't got it. You got it? Yeah, I was gonna get Sheila up here too. 
Come on. Everybody has stage fright. They did they did a class on gratitude this morning, and they had a list, and I said, when y'all do it, I'm going to use it in the sermon, because <laughs> there is power in thanksgiving. Let's say that together. There is power in thanksgiving. What did it, the definition of thanksgiving, the biblical definition, said it releases the power of God. One thing. You remember when Jesus turned the little boy's sack lunch, feeding 5,000 men, not counting women and children? The Bible says that the Lord had them take that meal out. They blessed it and they gave thanks for what they had. When you don't have enough, thank God for what you got and you may be surprised what happens. Can I get a good amen? Tell us what y'all, you had a couple of things in gratitude, ways to show it to the Lord. Yeah, we talked about ways to show gratitude to the Lord and we kind of talked to all the ladies that were in the class and we said, alright, how are some ways that you show gratitude to the Lord? And they said that a lot of them said we like to sit and talk with the Lord. Now that doesn't mean you have to be in church. That just means in your living room. Miss Sandy said that she liked to be in her living room and she said she talked to the Lord every day. Amen. And then we had um, reading and reading your Bible, learning more out of your Bible, mm -hmm. uh, serving the Lord, doing everything for Him, for His glory. That's what, what makes me think of whenever we have acts of service and serving the Lord. Everybody in this church, in some way, is serving the Lord. I mean, you have the, the kitchen ladies like Miss Lori, everybody that's in, the, you know, that's, you're serving us as a church. I mean, we're going to serve some dinner in a little bit, but you're doing that to serve the Lord. You know, I mean, all of you. And I know James, when he goes to the Ropens, he's spreading some seed. That's also serving in the Lord that's being grateful yeah planting the seed you're you're being grateful to God through that way through that action that's good so things that we can show we need to be thankful to the Lord number one what's another one you got there yeah our praise and worship whenever we're here right now worshiping the Lord all together we sing Man, you wouldn't want to see me going down the road. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll have tears dripping off my cheeks, and it's just me and the Lord. And they think, Lord, he must have had a bad horse at that last stop. He's crying. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened. But sometimes I just like to tell the Lord, thank you for being good to me. Yeah, amen. amen. Thank you that my kids, you know, how many of you got kids that aren't perfect? Hmm. Amen. You mean that happens to people? <laughs> How many of you got yourself that ain't perfect? <laughs> Amen. But you know what I do? I, sometimes I go down the road and just say, Lord, thank you for keeping your hand on my family, my kids. Amen. You know, because I've got friends that have had to bury a, a, a kid and people in this room have had to do it. And my heart goes out to you. But you know, if, 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 if we face something hard in life, this is what I always tell Allison. Whatever you're going through, God will give you the grace to go through. But when you're thankful, when you find something to be thankful for, you unleash God's power. Something else that really hit me last week is I was having, oh, you know, do y'all ever have a day where you're just grouchy? You know, you just have a day that you're like, you're just Why not, is all the women raising their hands? <laughs> you're just not good company just, for anything. Well, I was just thinking... And I was like, man, I'm thankful that, that Chet loves me when I'm grouchy, when I'm not lovable, you know. And you think about like Chet said, because I texted him and I said, thanks for loving me even when I'm unlovable. And he said, we're all unlovable sometimes, you know. And you think about God loves us all when we're unlovable. <laughs> that's right. So that's something that really, really hit me. And then how can we show gratitude, this one or something, to, to people? To each other. That was one they was talking about, gratitude to God. That's what I'm supposed to be talking about. But throw one out for people. Uh, Tell them. Showing genuine concern for them. Uh, when they're talking to you, you're actually listening to them. You don't just hear them. And whenever you do listen to them, you can pick up on what their needs may be. And you can have concern for that and even possibly act on it to help that person. And that's a way of showing your gratitude towards someone. 
Amen. That's I think in this church we do a good job. I mean, everybody here at some point, I think you're all, your hearts are open and to love each other and to show love like when you're out in public. I mean, if you're at Walmart and somebody needs some help or just needs a smile or encouragement, I, I, I'd be feel pretty safe to bet that everybody here would be that way, that you'd be that person to smile and say, hey, it's going to be all right. You've got it. You're going to be okay. You know, show concern to people. And I think everybody here, I would bet, does it. Amen. Just just a simple thank you. When we say thank you to the Lord, it's powerful. When we say thank you to other people, and uh, y'all give them a hand clap. These ladies did good. I tell you something I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for Cody. Cody had everything fixed up for the sound for me preaching. And then I said, somebody's going to use the, the handheld mic. And he took off. Did y'all see him? He went up there probably, probably having to mix in that handheld mic. But we all have our part to play. And my challenge to you is the ingredient that will open the windows of heaven for us is being thankful for what we have. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 and 16 and we're about out of time. Verse 14, everybody say amen. amen. Everybody say oh me. Amen. How many old folks know what my mother used to say? He says you could either say amen or you could say oh me. They used to say it at church when I was a kid. What, when you're saying oh me that means boy I got to apply that to my life. And some scriptures are not easy in the Bible. Now verse 14 of Philippians chapter 2 is a challenge. It says, do everything. Let's say it together. Do without what? Now, how many of us already know we didn't we didn't jump ship right there? We got something to work on when we get home today. <laughs> do everything without complaining. How many of you know it is a temptation to complain sometimes? I know a few weeks ago when the inde heat index was 110 and I was in a bar and it was like I was in a, a hot box. And I was tempted to say, oh man, I did say, it's hot. <laughs> but it's easy to complain. It says, do everything without complaining and what? Argue. argue. Man, arguing is really just a waste of time. Can I get a good amen? Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one will criticize you. Verse 15. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Now I'm going to read verse 16. It says, Hold firmly to the word of life. Then, on the day of Christ, help me out. You know, he is coming again one day. He'll split that eastern sky. Then on the day of Christ's return, Paul was speaking to the church here. He says, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. So he's telling this church... Do everything without complaining and arguing. So we have a challenge. The opposite of being thankful is to complain. And we're all tempted to complain in life at times. If you study the children of Israel out, it was an 11-day journey, but it took them 40 years. And you know, when you read and study the children of Israel, you can't do much but giggle because you see yourself. I see myself. Wow, what in the world? Remember, they didn't know what they were going to do. They got up to the Red Sea. Pharaoh's horses was breathing at them. And God told Moses, don't you know Moses had some pressure on him? He's leading all these children of Israel out. And the Lord says, take your staff, reach it out, stretch it out over the sea. And what did God do? He parted the Red Sea. Can I get a good amen? amen. And as soon as they go through the Red Sea and then it comes back on Pharaoh and all his horses and chariots, God supernaturally delivered them. The children of Israel stepped their foot on fresh, dry ground and immediately begin to what? Complain. Complain. Got some preachers out there. And we do the same thing sometimes. They started complaining and said, we don't have anything good to drink. <laughs> That's a pretty good amen. Ryan said, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. That's probably what God was saying. And it was one complaint after another. They spent 40 years on an 11-day journey because they were complaining. And had they learned to be thankful. See, the, the, the more thankful you and I become for what we got, the quicker we're going to get through these little journeys through the wilderness. Can I get a good amen? They, they, they died in the wilderness. So my challenge to you is today, please, 
ladies. Man, we got the best church in the world. I love our church. I'm so thankful. If I go around individually, every person in this church has been a blessing to me. And you know, I have the privilege to stand before you so I can tell every one of you, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done for me. In the year that we've been here, y'all been so good to us. Can I get a good amen? But I just tell you, thank you. Thank you for all you do. Whatever you do, whether you're cooking in the kitchen, whether it's the band up here at 845 or 830, I appreciate it everybody whatever you do for the Lord in our church we thank you for it amen and just like that means something to you that I would honestly tell you sincerely thank you can you imagine what it means to God when we take a little time out of our so-called busy day and say Lord I just want to thank you <laughs> it means a lot to the Lord amen and I'm telling you better get your seat buckle and get it snapped in when you start learning to be thankful because God does move in your life and he can take a little and turn it into a lot amen so don't block your blessings learn to live with a grateful heart to God obviously not only to the Lord but to people if you read Numbers 14 verse 1 through 10 we're not going to pull it up today we're out of time but study that on your own, on your own time and see what the children of Israel began to murmur and complain and Moses and Aaron stopped them. Thank God for good positive leadership. Amen. They were fussing and fighting and Moses and Aaron, it says they tore their clothes. And in the Bible days, that was severe grief, a sign of grief. And they spoke up and said, hey, if the Lord's with us, we can do this thing. And so through their murmuring and complaining, we learn a lot through it. We do some of those things, but this makes sure that we're not complaining and when we catch ourselves self-complaining not if but when we stop it and we start thanking God for life can I get a good amen Lord thank you for letting me live on this earth let me be here thank God for the good things amen but when you really start maturing in your walk is when you can thank God for the bad things because the hard times we've been through now that I look back just in my personal testimony I'm sure you as well you thank him for the hard times because the hard times make you who you are now Amen. See, I would probably take my little John Deere tractor for granted, but not no more. I don't think I ever did. Maybe I did. But when you go without a tractor and you, you have to borrow one or you wait seven years to get you an 8 in Ford, and then when you move on up and get you a nice little 50 horse John Deere four wheel drive, man, I'm thankful for that tractor. Can I get a good amen? Amen. And I'm more thankful today because I realize God's restored everything that I lost. It's humbling. Amen. So that, do all things without what? Remember that scripture we read earlier? Do all things without complaining. So every time we catch ourselves complaining, we're going we're gonna to say, Lord, forgive me. And I thank you for what you're doing in my life. We can always find something to be thankful for. Lord, may you help us to be quick to be thankful. And thanksgiving is the key ingredient, Lord, for you moving and using us in this life on this earth. So, Lord, so may we be thankful. Lord, we do want to thank you publicly for all you do for us. And forgive us for when we fall short. When we catch ourselves complaining, we're going to do something about it. Lord, we didn't come to church just to have our ears tickled. We learned something. We're going to leave here and be thankful. In Jesus' name, heads bowed and eyes closed. You never accepted Christ. God so loved the world that he sent his son. And all you have to do is receive Jesus as your Savior. This is a prayer I prayed 20-something years ago. I said, Lord, I realize you sent your son to die on the cross for my sin. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I open my heart up and come into my heart and have your way in my life. Lead and guide me from this day forward. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Everybody said? If you haven't been water baptized, you're watching online or here, we'll, we'll, we'll fire that baptistry up at any time. Just let us know if you need to be water baptized, need a baby dedication. I'm excited about our church and where we're headed. And how many of you are thankful about what's, what's about to go down right back here? Let me go ahead and bless it, all right? Let's give thanks for the food that we're about to receive. Lord, Thank you, Lord, for the power of thanksgiving. And Lord, we thank you for providing us a meal. And as a family, we come together as a church body, as a family of God. I ask you to bless this food and bless the hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name, everybody said, I'll see y'all out back. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long.
everybody needs one of these books, just come holler at me. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, praising my Savior.